Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Tessa Kohler Art. I'm Tessa, if you're new, please feel free to let me know in the comments, like and subscribe to this channel so that I can keep making these tutorials and teaching you some awesome art skills and how to achieve a lot of cool techniques with various mediums. For the color palette, I used a very minimal palette of just burnt sienna, a red, a yellow, a rose color for the cheeks, and of course black and white, and a Payne's gray for shadowing and shading. The first paint stroke that I make, I do so very lightly, with very light pressure, and with the ratio, an even ratio of paint and water. I wanted this to be a little more expressionistic as opposed to too realistic. I wanted my marks to be a little freer and just a little bit more loosey-goosey, I guess you could say. There was a lot of artificial lighting on her, but I thought the lighting was actually very interesting. It had sort of a yellow orangey glow to it and really brought out the rosiness of her cheeks, which I'm emphasizing here. With the color palette, I mixed an orange color with the yellow and the red and the burnt sienna and a little white, which created a nice skin tone color. And then I went in more with the orangey yellow color, as you're seeing me do here, to emphasize that lighting and how it was hitting her skin. The hair can be a little more suggestive in watercolor. I mostly focused on just getting the shape of her head and, you know, her hair and how light was hitting her head and hair and her ponytail and where the highlights were and the shadows were to really give it a little bit of depth so that I didn't have to focus too much on super intricate detail. That's not what you really want to do with watercolor. Of course, it depends on exactly how detailed you want your watercolor painting to be. And I wanted mine to be a little bit more, like I said, expressionistic and freer with my marks. To get her features down, I mixed a light burnt sienna color and started very light first. Then I gradually darkened that burnt sienna color to add more definition and a little structure around her face, around her nose, under her nose where that shadow is, near her mouth, and around her cheeks and under her eyes. I added more definition under her jaw with that slightly darker color. At this stage of the watercolor painting, you want to be as subtle with your marks as you possibly can be. Very light, but very intentional with your marks. But also, you want to make sure that you're getting enough paint on the paper down. Because once this paint dries, that boldness is going to kind of fade a little bit. So you don't want to lose too much of that boldness, but you don't want it to be too bold at the same time. You want to find that good balance. Here I am emphasizing bone structure, again being very light in my application of the paint and gradually layering these shadows and being thoughtful about how I am applying the paint and using my tissue to pick up some of that pants a little bit, create a little bit more texture. The tissue is really great for creating texture, but also evening the paint out and picking up some of that paint so that it's just not too heavily applied onto the paper. As you can see, I am gradually adding darker values in the areas that are shaded and have a little bit more structure to them, but still trying not to be too detailed in my application of the paint, but just kind of gradually going in and building layers in areas where I feel there needs to be more layering, where things are a little 
darker, like underneath her chin there, underneath her jaw. One thing I want to mention regarding mixing flesh tones. The nice thing about watercolor is the fact that you can do so much layering and create really beautiful color combinations. Here I just included a rose color and then I glazed it with a light yellowy orange color as you're seeing. I'm just constantly building layers to get more drama with the lighting. It's very important at this stage of the painting to make sure that your skin tones are consistent throughout the whole painting. You know, if your skin tones aren't correct, it's just going to look a little bit weird. So I was very cautious and mindful about how I was mixing my skin tones and being very gradual in my application with the paint. Now let's zoom in with the hand here. I gradually darkened around the fingers and was very mindful of the direction in which I was painting to create that form to make sure I was getting the hand structured and accurate. Babies or infants are very difficult to paint and draw. I will admit it, they are very challenging. Really, it's all about getting the shape of their head and their features and their skin texture and skin tones correct. A baby's skin tone is very light, very delicate, very fair. There's warm and cool tones in a baby's skin. Here I'm emphasizing the warm tones. I also go in and emphasize the cool tones like around her eyes. You really do see a lot more bone structure in a baby's face and it's really just about knowing what highlights and shadows to emphasize. You know, you're gonna find yourself adding uh, more rosy tones, red tones, uh, darker burnt umber tones to create more depth and perspective. Just pay attention to where those highlights and shadows are. You'll get into a groove the more you work with watercolor and experiment. It's really just about applying the medium and handling the medium in a way that works best for you, that you find to be the most enjoyable and easiest to do. It's okay to, you know, as you you're doing the painting to test out your marks first. Make sure you've got the right amount of paint and water, the correct ratio, and that's really gonna make a difference for how your painting turns out. And as you can see here, I'm just going in with the really dark areas with more paint than water in these dark spots here and still being very gradual but also a little bit more detailed in this area of the painting. To close out this tutorial, I'm going to teach you guys a technique that I learned in college. I took a watercolor class and this technique just totally changed the game for me and I still use it today. So now I'm going to teach you guys. If there is an area in your painting that you feel is too dark or too bold, if you want to edit that and take some of that boldness and darkness away, simply dampen or saturate a brush in water, make sure there's no paint on it, and with your tissue, go in and pick up that paint and water, and that will act as an eraser. Thank you so much for watching and follow along. I hope you guys gave these techniques a try the next time you do a watercolor painting and for sure tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see it and I of course will promote it. Again, make sure to like and subscribe so that I can keep teaching you all this awesome stuff. Thanks so much and have a great holiday season.